Good morning everyone. So it's time to hit the road yet again. So last night I got some rest in, eight loads, ridiculous amounts. So I had like 500 grams of pasta and all that stuff you saw on the table before. Really rehydrated myself well, so I'm looking forward to today. It's still going to be a tough one, I know that. It's about 1,200 uh, metres total ascent, maybe even more than that. But no, I'm, I'm ready for it. I'm about as ready for it as I'm going to be, unless I actually took the bus, of course. But that's cheating. I don't do that. If I put my mind to something, I'm going to do it. So I have 70 kilometres to cover over very hilly terrain. The first 20 kilometres is all uphill without a break. So that will be good, won't it? Sweet. And that's about all, really. So I'll hit the road and uh, give you some videos from the road. Speak to you in a bit. Cheers. So I thought I'd do the commentary a little bit about mindset and uh, physical capability when it comes to cycling up hills and things. So in a way, I don't actually consider myself a cyclist. Now, I know that seems a bit weird considering that most of my trips have involved cycling thousands of kilometers around the world. But I actually consider myself to be a traveller who cycles. I just use the bicycle as a means of travel. So I'm not like a, a Lycra cyclist. I couldn't tell you what my ideal cadence is. I have no idea of the technicalities of cycling at all. I just get on a bike and pedal it. And that's my belief is that anyone can do a bicycle tour. Now, I am reasonably fit. I'm also 44 years old, so I'm not young anymore. And these are going to be some serious mountains. So. Yes, my physical fitness is going to help me out and over the course of the tour, I've, you know, my legs have developed in strength, that's great. But the main thing is the mindset. Now, you can approach this uh, uphill section and go, oh my god, it's just going to be so tough and I don't know if I can make it and oh, oh. And trust me, that negative uh, mindset will mean that you won't make it and you will find it tough and you won't enjoy it. Uh, I've been there, I've done it, it you know, that's what happens. But if you have a positive mindset, it makes all the difference. If you can just put a positive energy into it, sure it's still hard work, but you're going to feel a lot better and it, it's more rewarding when you see a view. It's like when you get to the top of a hill or around a bend and then you look around, then there's a wonderful view there. And to be fair, it's the only way you can get through pretty tough days because this was, uh, overall, the entire day ended up being 1,600 metres of ascent. And you'll see in a minute how, how, I, how I reached this first peak and uh, the stats involved in this. A lot of it is just cycling on with it. You just got to get on with it. And uh, yeah, that, that's one of the challenges that I like about doing bicycle tours. You know, it is a physical challenge, but it's also a mental challenge. It's like waking up in the morning and just saying, yeah, I'm just going to do this and just enjoy it as well. And that's the most important thing. Well, this is my opinion when it comes to bicycle tour, and I'm sure that everyone is different. Anyhow, I'm just about to reach the top of the first hill. I've taken you the short way as it took me a couple of hours, but it's only five minutes for you here. And I'll, I'll show you the stats from the hill. So I hope you can hear me over the sound of the wind, which is quite strong up here. But I've reached the highest peak of the day so far. I'm at 700 metres and I basically started off at sea level. And this is the view that I get, which I think you'll agree is quite rewarding. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that view. Obviously, there was a little bit of work involved. Let's have a little walk over to the bike and I'll show you the computer on the bike to show you the stats. I'm not sure if this will show up, so I'll read them out at the same time. So I have, uh, would help if my shadow wasn't in the way. I'll read them, it's probably easier. So total ascent of 724 metres and I'm at an elevation of 699 metres. Okay, so I've got one more metre to go. Uh, I've done only done 15.1 kilometres today, so far. That's taken me an hour and 55 minutes and apparently I've, bought, I've burnt a thousand calories. Yeah, it feels about that. And there we go. So I don't know if you can see on there, but I've got a little downhill section and it looks like the very highest peak of the day is gonna be at about just over a thousand meters and that'll be a bit later on. So for now, I will finish enjoying the view, have a banana, have something to eat and hit the road. Speak to you in a bit. So for every uphill section, obviously there's a downhill section. And on the way down, I started passing through towns and villages, which uh, look very different than the coastal region of Croatia. They've got almost Germanic or even Austrian look to them. And I started thinking about the nature of the people as well. I found the people in the south of the countries, particularly from Split uh, to Dubrovnik, 
to be quite sullen people, and this is no offence to, to people from Croatia, by the way, but I, I found it very hard for them to almost smile and to get a conversation going. But as I've headed north, the nature of the people's changed and everyone's a lot more open and friendly. And I don't know if it's got something to do with the tourism that uh, is around the Dubrovnik area. Maybe it's just changed the nature of the people, but it's definitely noticeable. Well, it was noticeable for me on my bicycle tour anyway. So I just thought I'd mention that. So as, as I said, we're coming downhill. Um, now, I use my GPS and Garmin Connect to block my routes to some success. Uh, and one of the best things about using it is it gives you an idea of the topography of the land. So you know where it's going to go up, you know where it's going to go down. In a way, it's a bit of a mixed blessing because obviously I'm enjoying this nice downhill section now. But I know that there's another uphill section coming up. So I'm losing 200 metres of elevation and I know I've got to put on another 300 metres of elevation in another five kilometres time. So at this point, it, uh, it starts making life a little bit harder really. But, uh, but still, it's all part of the fun. And at this point, as I hit the other uphill section, I thought I'd mess around with the camera angle. Uh, I'm not going to be a Spielberg by the looks of it. I don't think my filmmaking skills are very good. But hey, you know, thought I'd experiment with the camera a little bit. And yeah, that's me really enjoying the road there. <laughs> so yeah, going uphill, I mean, it's obviously it is hard work. And it doesn't matter how much food and water you take on board. You can't quite put enough back into the system to replace what you're burning off. And I think over the last few days I've been in calorie deficit, which is uh, I need to put right once I get back onto some flat road. So I'm going to get back up to the top of the next hill and give you some more stats. Hi there, so as you can see, I'm more or less at the peak of the highest point of the day. So a total ascent today so far of 1,391 metres and I'm currently at 874 metres in elevation and I've done 49.6 kilometres and it's taken me 4 hours 46 so I'm not exactly going to set many world records. On the other hand the calories, well surely I've earned myself a big dinner from that haven't I? And so it should be all downhill from here. I mean, I think I might have a couple me more meters to go to get to the top. But looking over there, which I think is the way I'm headed, that looks to be a bit of a rain cloud. So I'm not too sure if I'm gonna get wet or not. So I will get on with it and let you know later. When I look at this tour after almost 30 days on the road now, I sometimes can't believe how smoothly it's gone. Everything seems to have gone my way. Even today when it rained eventually, it did so as I was coming downhill and there was a cafe on my left hand side. So as soon as it started raining, I just pulled into the cafe literally with my bike, sat down and had a coffee. And then 20 minutes later, the weather cleared and away I was again. So after that highest peak, it was basically all downhill and I was heading to a town called Ogilin, uh, where I got another cheapy hotel booked, 18 euros for the night. Uh, after this, I head straight to Slovenia and I'm being hosted for two nights in a campsite called Big Berry Camping. And I'm going to see what, uh, what that's all about. Apparently it's a glamping site, so I'm quite looking forward to checking it out. And once I've left there, it's a matter of heading to Bratislava for my next deadline, where I meet the missus who's flying over for another 10 days. So, this is the end of the day cycling. It's just me cycling through to Ogilin. Uh, a long day, probably the toughest day of the tour so far, but at the end of it, I felt like it, I felt really good. I felt like I could achieve almost anything. So again, it's a case of just getting some water down me, eating plenty, resting, getting ready for the next day. Thanks a lot. See you next time.